Oh, there's a sh tread under there somewhere. One of the issues with hiking after a rain. <laughs> this is like, they said it was going to be muddy. This is more like clay. And I think I weigh like 20 extra pounds right now just from the mud that's on my shoes. We just spent about a day and a half at South Llano River State Park near Junction, Texas. We came out on Friday, stayed at their little campground on Friday night. First trip for the van that we've set up to camp on the weekend, so that was nice to test that out. Hold, uh, hold on. It's not the first trip for the van. It's the first trip now with our new bed set up. That sounded funny. It sounded like it was the first trip with the van, and oh. that's clearly not true. <laughs> I think that's what I was getting at, and maybe I didn't say it right. Yes, the first trip with the van since we put in the new bed set up, so... <laughs> Yes. Good point. Since we spent all summer in Utah on the weekends in the van, van camping. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but now this is the new setup and it worked out pretty well. I, we made a couple of notes, but. Yeah, I think there'll be some slight modifications more to the stuff that we've set up in the van in terms of like how we're storing everything in the van. We might yeah. need to move a thing, few things around, but. All in all, it was good. But uh, and now this is Saturday. We've spent the day um, hiking various trails. There's what, about a dozen trails here at this park. We just got done with Mid Canyon, which we took after we did the West Canyon Loop Trail. Uh, it was an interesting weekend, though, because it rained a lot more than it was supposed to. Um, I'm going to put my visor on because despite the fact that it's been raining all weekend, the sun has finally decided to come out and I can't see anything. So that's because we're trying to my face is a little shaded now, but. I'm blind. Yeah. How do you make the sun come out and get in your eyes? Try to shoot a video. Try to shoot a video and take your head off. So we knew coming into this weekend, at least as of yesterday, that there was a chance of rain, which unfortunately, because we picked this park specifically because it's an international dark sky park and it has some really cool hiking trails and a lot of wildlife. And so we thought, great weekend. We'll go out and check this out. And of course, it stormed all night. It stormed all morning. And we're talking like storm storms like thunder lightning hail like it was bad storms and so we really couldn't do much of anything uh for a while but we still made the best of it and we actually got about five miles of hiking in despite all of that well and i will say timing wise it's rained overnight it stopped in the morning so we were able to have breakfast and pack up the van and get everything ready to go before it rained again. Yeah. Uh, but then we couldn't hit the trails. But it's one of those, we always talk about being flexible. And, you know, you talk about having plan A, plan B, plan C. So plan A was to head out and do some of the longer trails. That wasn't going to happen, not just because of rain, but it was a thunderstorm and we didn't want to be out in that. Uh, and, and so we decided, okay, plan B is there's some shorter trails. There's Buck Lake that we walked out to. There's a river trail that we did part of. And those are close enough to the parking lot that if it really started to storm, yeah. we could get back quickly. That was plan B. We were going to spend a lot of time doing that. That didn't take very long. Well, it didn't take very long because it started storming. I mean, we did go out in the rain, and but about the time it started hailing on us was when we decided to call it quits and go back to the van. So we only got maybe three quarters of a mile, maybe a mile on that trail um, before we decided to call it quits because yeah. I wasn't going to be out there in a thunderstorm and hail. So then we decided to go with plan C, which was to head into Junction. We talked to some of the rangers here that work at the park and got some recommendations on different restaurants in town that were good. So we thought, well, let's go and kill some time in Junction and have lunch. And we found Lum's Barbecue, which was really good. Really good. Good brisket. Good cream corn, macaroni and cheese. And oh, the smoke, the jalapeno cheddar smoked sausage was really good. So <laughs> that was tasty. It didn't take nearly as long to eat as I thought it would. <laughs> But it was a good thing, though, because it actually cleared up quicker than we expected yes. it to. So the point of all of this was we had plan A, then we went to B, and then plan C, and now we've looped back to plan A. <laughs> so if you're flexible and you have the time that you could wait out a storm, you could have what happened to us today, which is we got to get out on the trails this afternoon. Now, these trails are known for wildlife because we were here in mid-afternoon. We didn't see really any wildlife, saw some birds, but it was still you know a nice hike and a, a nice place to hang out. I think there's about a dozen or so main trails in this park, and then there's a number of little loops and spurs and other things. One thing to keep in mind is that some of the bigger trails, the Mid Canyon, the West Canyon, the some other ones that are on the map that I don't remember, it, they all come off of the, it's not the Margarita Trail. <laughs> it should be. Agarita. Agarita. <laughs> Bummer. I was really hoping for margaritas on that one. Anyway, they all come off of the Agarita Trail, which is about three quarters of a mile in, and then they spur. So you kind of have to know that you're adding on about a mile to a mile and a half um, to your total distance of the trails that you're looking at. So just keeping that in mind. 
but r- relatively easy. They're essentially on many cases open like two track, uh, what were ranch roads from the land that used to be used as a ranch area here. But the bigger thing to keep in mind is when you're coming here, a good section of this park is known as like the turkey roost area. And apparently for hundreds of years, the turkeys have been coming and resting and nesting down here by the South Llano River. And so um, as close as you get to the river and the pecan trees, that's where their nests are, and that's where they go up in their trees and they do their roosting and all that thing. And so from October to March, that area is sort of off limits for a good section of the time, and it's only open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. In other ways, they put up chains and they lock you out of that section. So if you want to do any of the trails in there, the, yeah, the anything that's up by the South Llano River, so like the River Trail, the the River or the Buck Lake, Buck Lake Trail and some of the other little spurs, you can only do that between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And so that's it's a good thing we actually went first thing this morning when it was raining because otherwise we probably wouldn't have gotten to do those. Yeah, that actually worked out. We should mention, too, a little bit of the history on this park. You mentioned a ranch. So um, Buck Lake is named uh, Walter Buck was a rancher that owned this land. He bought this property in the early 1900s. He actually bought it because they wanted to move down here. Uh, his son had tuberculosis, and they thought the open air would do some good. Unfortunately, the son died like a year after they moved here, um, so it didn't help. But he decided, Walter decided to stay and ranch and take care of the land, and then Walter Jr. ended up taking it over, and they finally donated it to the state in the 1970s, if I remember correctly. Yeah, in 1977, they turned it over f- uh, basically for free with the stipulation that it stay in like a natural air state, whether that's a preserve, a wildlife management area, state park, what have you. So gave it to the state and it took the state a few years to redevelop it, put the campground in, all the buildings and everything. And then it opened as a state park uh, 1990, I think it said. And for many years, they used the original ranch house as the state park headquarters building, but they have now since built a new entrance area with a you know where you come in and you pay and there's a little gift shop and and restrooms and everything so it doesn't appear that the original house is being used any longer but hopefully they'll redevelop it and there's just some of the old buildings here that they use like the garage the barn the stables there's an old cemetery that actually even predates the buck family Mm -hmm. because those dates on the headstones were from like the 1850s so there were people here um back then and so Apparently, the family that lived here buried at least four or five people here in that cemetery. Well, you mentioned them developing the campground. There are RV sites here. There's about 50 of them. They have water and electric on site, 20 and 30 amp, no 50 amp sites from what I could tell. And they're not giant sites. I think you said, what, 49 feet total, and that's your rig that you're towing and your tow vehicle. Yeah, the I, we did see a couple good sized class A's and fifth wheels, but then your tow vehicle or your towed is kind of parked in a weird angle, and that's only if you can put your wheels all the way to the back and hang over. Uh, there is a separate overflow site though, so if you have a second vehicle or you need to park your truck somewhere else, you can do that. Um, but yeah, they're not very big. I mean, we just had the van, but even you just drive around, it's your it's going to be a tight fit for some people. I will say the pads aren't very long, but the sites themselves are good size and there's plenty of distance between them. We were walking around a couple times last night and we joked at one point, we're like, if this were Michigan, there'd be three more campsites packed in between <laughs> these two campsites. Uh, so yeah, it's nice that there's a lot, there's quite a bit of privacy and it's you've got some space. Yeah. I wouldn't say privacy, privacy though, because it's not like there's brush or shrubs in between, but there's a lot of space. So you you don't feel like you're crammed in. And one, one thing I really like, and this will come in handy when it's hot in the summertime is all of their picnic tables have little um, pavilion shelter tops over them. So it was good when it was rainy a little bit this morning so we could eat breakfast under there and have a dry picnic table and be out of the rain and other people were hanging out there. But in the summer, you're going to want that for the heat. So that's really nice. And they all have fire pits and um, there's a nice, uh, there's a bathroom building that looks like it probably could use a little bit of upkeep, but it's centrally located in the middle. So it's easy access for everybody. It's, I think that might be the original bathroom building. It might be. It's starting to show it. <laughs> age, so they need to do a little work on it, but they're doing their best to try to keep it up. One nice thing about staying at the campground is there are a couple of trails that you can get to right from the campground. There's some bird blinds that you can go out. Oh, and that's something we didn't mention. South Llano River State Park is really known for its birding. If There's like 250 species of birds that have been identified in this park. I've seen like three. I have no idea. 
Yeah. I don't but, do birds. <laughs> but if you know birds and you like birding, a lot of people, when they heard we were coming down here, we've had a couple people say, oh, it's really good for birding. And apparently it is because there's a lot of birds here. Uh, so, but yeah, there, there's a lot of bird blinds you can see right from the campground you walk to. And then there is the Overlook Trail that, that you found last night and said, let's take this little trail. It was a little further than I thought, but it was a nice trail. Sorry, I misread the number on the sign and I thought it was going to be like a mile total. And in fact, it was a mile out and a mile back and it was up a steep slope because, well, you're going to an overlook. But it was pretty and we got back before it got dark and that was the important part. Um, it was a little hazy and kind of dusky when we got up there. Um, but it was, it was like the highest point in the park and it had some really nice views of like the valley kind of below. So it was worth it. Yeah, right from the campground. Um, and then you can get to Buck Lake and the acorn blind. Yeah, the bird blind and some other stuff right there. And there is an amphitheater. Um, it looks like they just newly built it. I know nothing about it, but as we walked by, there's like a like a little stone amphitheater. So maybe they're going to be doing ranger programs there. It's probably and because this is the International Dark Sky Park, they'll probably be doing like telescopy stuff there. South Flannel River State Park is an international dark sky park. And it's great because they've put up all sorts of signs that say turn your lights off at night, keep your lights to a minimum. That way you can see the Milky Way and all the bright stars, which is amazing. And it's great. And I'm so glad they do that. And I wish other parks would have similar signs, regardless of whether they're dark sky parks or not. But as you can see, it's cloudy and we're never going to see the stars tonight, <laughs> which is a big bummer because that was one of the reasons for coming here. And it's cloudy and it may rain, um, but it's still going to be gorgeous. But always keep your lights up anyways, because nobody needs to see your lights when you're camping. There are actually a number of other things you can do here at this park as well. There is the river, South Llano River runs right through here, and you can uh, get into the river from the park, and they do tubing, and you can do kayaking. There's a lot of people that were out fishing in the river and at Buck Lake. Yep. They were doing that. Um, one thing to mention about the trails, I don't think we said, they are open to, to biking. So if you have your mountain bikes and you want to come out and check out the trails, you could do it that way and, you know, stop every so often and see if you catch any wildlife or see any wildlife. <laughs> don't catch the wildlife. They frown on that. No, I, I think, man, we just saw some people go by on their bikes and having just hiked that and how muddy it was. Oh, my gosh, that's going to be slipping and sliding the whole way. But, yeah, definitely a good place to, for mountain biking, I guess, if you're into that kind of thing. We didn't do all the trails. But speaking of wildlife, we have I think we've said multiple times in this video that we didn't see any wildlife. That's not true. We have seen some turkey, wild turkeys running around. I don't think we were able to capture any of them on video because they kind of go really quickly and disappear. We saw some armadillos last night you know after it got dark they come out and kind of scoot around the campground and they're looking for food and we did see some wild piggies which turn unfortunately turn into the wild boars which wreck havoc on the campground and the land but the six little piggies were adorable they don't stay little they and cute that's little the problem for thing. and and we've seen some birds and did we see anything else i don't maybe that was it no. but we did see some wildlife and we saw some turkeys which is the kind of the big thing here so and and just all the, the the random birds that I don't know. As you're going along Mid Canyon Trail, which you can either do by itself or when you come off of West Canyon, go maybe another half a mile or so, you'll come to interest point number four on the map, at least as of today's map, that's called Canyon Seep. And it's where water is seeping out of the canyon rocks and it's wet. And at first we were like, well, it rained today. How do you know the difference? But then you realize none of the other rock is wet. So like the specific areas where it is wet is where it's seeping. And that's really cool. I have no idea if it's a million years, 200 years, or two minutes old water, but it's cool nonetheless. All in all, if you're going to be in the Junction, Texas area, this is a, a nice place to stay and lots of different things to, to see and do while you're here. So if you get a chance, check out South Llano River State Park. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.